Okay, hi everybody, welcome back. This is Chris from ChristopherJ.net and this is my lesson number DB10 on playing your first notes on the bass. Um, so before I get started actually looking at playing on the bass, I want to show you uh, the uh, method book that I'm working from. If you're in a uh, school band, school orchestra, you might be using the Essential Elements for string series. Um, and that's what I started with when I first started trying to learn the bass on my own. And then after I started taking uh, private lessons, my instructor recommended that maybe I try the, uh, the Samandal bass method book, which is, I guess, the standard if you're uh, a bass major in college. Anyway, so that's what I'm working through, and if you want to get a copy for yourself so you can follow along, um, you can do that. It looks like this. It's a big orange book, and it's published by Carl Fisher. F. Samandal, New Method for the Double Bass. And then along with that, um, I'm also using a, a bowing technique book called Mastering the Bow. And it looks like this. And it's by Galen McCormick, G-A-E-L-E-N McCormick. And it's also published by Carl Fisher. Um, and it's based on um, violin studies uh, for bowing. Uh, but adapted for the bass and uh, so if you want to get a copy of that you can as well and uh, the difference between the two books is Samandal is kind of uh, at least the first section is very non-musical it's it's about learning in a really granular fashion every note in every position uh, on the instrument um, and then the second part has more uh, excerpts from actual musical pieces that are a little more fun to play. Um, but it's really good to teach you uh, every note and every position and how to play it. Bowling's more about technique for the right hand. So Samandal's like your left hand and this one's left for your right hand. So for today, if you have the Samandal book, we'll be looking at page six. And uh, the first thing I want to cover is uh, the explanation of the signs for uh, bowing. And uh, you'll need to know this if you're reading uh, notation, if you're playing an orchestra or, or band. So the two main uh, symbols are for down bow and up bow, and that's what they look like. Down bow is like the bottom half of a capital H, like a little bracket turned on its side. And then up bow is uh, like an arrowhead symbol pointing down. Kind of ironic that it points down, but it means up bow. I didn't invent it, but that's just what they are. Okay, now here is how you play the down bow and how you play the up bow. Down bow means you start at the frog end of the bow. And you pull it towards yourself that's a down bow. An up bow is just the opposite of that. It would be starting anywhere but at the frog, typically at the tip or in the middle, and pushing outwards. Like that. That's an up bow. A couple of the other symbols in the Samandal book that I uh, didn't point out earlier are uh, N, which means the nut or the frog. You'll see that in notation. T, which means the tip, and then M, which means somewhere in the middle of the bow. Okay. Now, as far as playing your first notes go, I'm not going to teach you about musical, uh, reading musical notation, how to read music. Um, there's plenty of other resources out there for that. The notes on the strings on the bass, I may have covered this uh, in a previous lesson, but just to refresh, the lowest string is E, and on notation, that's the first ledger line below the bass staff. And the bass is tuned in fourth, so the next string, the next open string, sounds at an A. And an A on the bass staff is uh, the note in the first space on the bottom of the uh, bass staff. Up from A is D, 
and that's on the, I believe, third line on the bass staff up from the bottom. And then a fourth up from D is G. And that's in the top space of the bass staff. So those are your notes. Now in the, the Samandel book, I'm looking at page six, like I said. Um, you begin by just playing open string notes. Uh, first just on one string, just to get loosened up and get comfortable with the bow. And if you don't have one, I'd recommend you get a uh, metronome, either an old-fashioned one like this, or if you have a smartphone, there's tons of apps out there, you can get a metronome app. And it's really a great thing to do to practice with the metronome as much as possible, so you get used to playing in time and feeling the beat of the music. So set your metronome for a comfortable speed. Um, I have mine on 80 beats per minute right now. And start with the D string, which is the first line uh, in the exercise on page 6 in Samandal. And just play a full down bow, and it indicates down bow on the, in the book. That's a whole note, four beats, okay? And try to do a full bow. So you learn to time your, your bowing arm with the tempo of the music. So that you end up at the tip to start the next note. And if you look on page six, the next note shows T for tip, so you should be at the tip. And it has an up bow symbol. And it takes a little more pressure to start a note playing when you're at the tip doing an up bow. So you have to push, apply a little more pressure with your index finger on the bow to get that going. And then so on, down bow again, and then up bow. And then you do the same thing on the other strings, and then you move to the A string. You might have noticed there that the tone of the, the note changed a little bit on the up bow. And that's something you really have to be um, sensitive to, is that it takes a certain, certain type of pressure and release, especially on the lower strings when you're on the tip of the bow, to get it to sound right. Otherwise, it's a strange sound that gets going. It's like the string and the bow are kind of vibrating in different, uh, or like out of phase. I'm not sure what the, uh, the real physical cause is, but you'll know it. It sounds more of a metallic kind of sound, like that. You don't want that. And then move to the G string. Same kind of exercise. that the bow should move parallel to the fingerboard. You don't want to go sideways either direction. It should be straight. And you also you need to adjust the angle of the bow to the face of the bass depending on what string you're playing on. So on, on the G string it's angled a little more uh, downward to the left D string, it's a little higher at the tip, you'll see, A string, and it's really, it's really, uh, you know, it just naturally follows the curve of the fingerboard and of the bridge, so, and then play on the A string. If you have the book, you can play through all the different exercises on page six. Um, he uh, mixes it up a little bit. Uh, some of them are just playing on one string, all on the D string, all on the A string, that kind of thing. Um, the next one is between the G and the, or, yeah, between the G string and the D string. Um, 
and then likewise between the D and the A string, and then between the A and the E string, and then between the G and the A string. So that's a bigger jump. It's a little easier to go to switch the bow between adjacent strings. But when you have to cross over a string and go three strings over, it's a little more of a challenge. Because you don't want to sound the, uh, the string in between accidentally. So that's basically what uh, page six consists of. Just working all the different open strings, um, playing with the metronome, keeping time, and switching the bow between adjacent strings and skipping a string. And after that, we will move on to learning about the different positions on the bass. That would be in the next exercise. If you've played electric bass, the positions, at least that Samandel came up with, um, for the double bass don't seem to relate real directly to uh, what you're used to on the uh, bass guitar um, but I'll talk about that next time so work on the open strings and if you have any questions feel free to email me or comment and I'll do my best to answer them until next time take care see you then bye bye